blessed Savior. Teach him by the way I know. Many are lost on Bali. Many are the water flow. But it's a hard road to travel. And a mighty long way to go. My God, it is a hard road to travel. And a mighty long way to go. Jesus, my blessed Savior. The way I know, oh, many a lonesome valley, oh, many deep water flows. It is a hard road to travel and a mighty long way to go. To road before you, take your choice. Say to road before you, take your choice. My God, to road before you. Yo 
read from the book of uh, Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. And I'm going to read again verse number 8 through verse number 11. So verse 8 of our text. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And the key verse is verse number 11, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I told you um, last time I was here that uh, for the next few weeks, well, some preaching, I'm going to preach to you about Jesus. Amen? Because Jesus is supposed to be the center, the focal individual of the, of the, of the, you know, we focus on him. He is the, the center of all that we are doing in church. Amen? Amen? And that's why you probably hear me like to talk about a Christ-centered life, Christ-centered ministry, because sometimes we put the focus on individuals and take it away from Christ. So I want us to bring our focus and focus on Jesus. Amen. And so today I want to speak about the Lordship of Christ, the Lordship of Christ. Father, thank you for your words. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for revelation. Thank you for inspiration. Thank you for discernment of spirit. I pray in Jesus' name that you would bless to our hearts your word today. And as I speak, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Touch every listener, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus. May we be inspired, transpired, and changed by your word. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. The Lordship of Christ. The Apostle Paul, in his writing from Rome to the Philippians church, the Philippian church, of course, was said to be an ideal one in many respects. For example, in appreciation and benevolent, this was a church that appreciate the ministry of Paul and support him. And so he's writing. This church, of course, was founded by the Apostle Paul on his second missionary journey. And it was founded amid a storm of persecution. You remember that he was in prison in, the, in Philippi. So, and, and, and how the jailer, uh, after God, sent an earthquake and rent the foundation of the jail and released the Apostle Paul from prison. How the jailer was about to kill himself and the Apostle Paul says, do yourself no harm, we are all here. Well, that jailer, he became a foundation member of the Philippians church. Mm -hmm. Amen. The beginning was very small. It started among a few women at the riverside. Lydia, the seller of purple, was one of those first converts, and she was soon joined by the Philippian jailer and his family. Amen. Family is important. Amen. When we talk about the Lordship of Christ, family is important. What did Paul say to the jailer? He says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. You and your family shall be saved. When I preach, I try to inspire, but I also want to challenge. So let's Think for a moment, if every one of us in here, every one of us in Cathedral of Praise, if all our family members that are not saved was here, what kind of church would we have? Be a church bursting at the sea. Come on, somebody, talk to me. I said, if all of our unsaved children and grandchildren was here in this church, the church would be bursting at the sea. 
You didn't expect that. that. That one came out of nowhere. But he says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your household will be saved. The central message of the book of Philippians is that Jesus is Lord. That's the key message. That's what it is saying. And when we talk about Lord, we are talking about an, a, a title that is ascribed to an individual. And you know, in our, in our country, we have peerage and we have lords and all of that. But hear me, the, the Lord Jesus that I'm talking about, he's not just Lord, but he is Lord of all lords. Oh, somebody ought to help me preach today. I said, Jesus is not just Lord, he is Lord of lords. He is king of kings. He is a cut above the rest. Mm. So, for example, we talk about Lord. We talk about the Lord of the vineyard, for example. In Matthew 28 through 16, we talk about the Lord of the harvest. So we talk about the master of the house. We talk about the Lord of the Sabbath. Those, that's the kind of person we are describing um, Jesus to be. So he is Lord, the Lordship of Christ. And I don't know where this quotation comes from, but it says if Jesus is not Lord of all, then he is not Lord at all. Because Jesus is not satisfied with a part of us. He is a demanding God. You could say a greedy God if you want. He wants all of us. And that's why he says you must serve me with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your soul, with all of your strength. You got to give me everything. 99, you'll be singing. There's a song that says, help me Jesus to make a hundred. You know that one? For a 99.5 won't do. Wow. So the outline of my sermon today is that Jesus is Lord of the universe. And that he is Lord of the church. And finally, he is Lord of our lives. So let's talk about the Lord of the universe. You know the scripture says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein, because he founded it upon the waters and established it upon the sea. What that says to me says that all of the world belongs to God. When I say God and I say Jesus, essentially sometimes I'm talking about the same person. Amen? So it belongs to God because he was the one who founded it. He was the one who established it. Hello? You know, you, know, you hear people talk about if, if we could find the, the architect who designed this building, he would say, this is my creation. You've never heard those saying, yes, I, I create this. But can I just tell you that everybody outside of God the Father who make anything, they didn't create it. They make something out of something that was already created. Oh, come on. Jesus is the only one who creates. The rest of us made stuff from the material that he has created. Is there truth in that? So he is Lord of the universe. He established the sea. He established the land. He established the galaxy. He put the moon and the stars in their places and they all obey him. Let me go back to the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. So all of the poverty that's in the world. Come on, talk to me somebody. And all of the starvation that's in the world. I put it to you today that God's created enough to feed all of humanity. There's enough resources to go around. What's the problem? Greed. Amen. You know, I was preaching somewhere. I was preaching in Germany and I said, I said, just off the cuff, there's nothing wrong with the world. And everybody was looking at me saying, what are you talking about? The world is in a mess. There's nothing wrong with the world. What's wrong is the people of the world. 
How do I know that? Because God says, when I created the world, I look at it and it was good. There's nothing wrong with it. It was perfect. It was good. So the world as it is, is good. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. There is enough created to go around but greed. So people carve up the land for themselves. You know, some time ago I listened to, um, I don't remember his name, but he was one of the lords. He was speaking in there and he says, he says, where there is poverty in the world, if countries in the West don't do something to help those poverty stricken country, the freedoms that we enjoy, we'll soon lose them. What do you mean by that? Well, they, they bump you, don't they? Come on, somebody. Oh, you're not understanding me. They will fight you for it. You know, just like the thief says, what you have is mine and I'll take it. I'll kill you if I have to take it in the process. And that's what's wrong with the world because there is too much greed. But God who created the heavens and the earth, he creates enough to go around. So he owns everything. And that's why, that's why you don't have to worry. That's why you should not be anxious. Hello? That's, okay, you know, we're talking about global warming and all of that and COP26 and all of those things. Yes, they're important. They are important. And I believe that there is an issue. And that's why I said to my wife, my next car is going to be a mild hybrid. I'm going to give up the diesel. I'm going to have petrol and electric. Do my little bit for the planet. Come on, somebody, help me preach. And every one of us can do something to help the planet. So let me park that there and move on. Let me part that and move on. But the point, the point I'm making though, no man, no man, if you believe what I believe, is going to be able to destroy this earth. Come on somebody, help me preach. If you believe in a rapture, I understand my Bible says that the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet him in the earth. So that is telling me that when Jesus return, life will be on earth. People will be on earth. The earth will be intact. How much of it and how long will it take before he come? But I can tell you Jesus is undoubtedly coming soon. The creator of the universe will not let any mankind destroy his creation. Mm. Mm. So he is Lord of the universe and he provides everything that you need. Everything that you need. And that's why the psalmist says, you know, the Lord is, is my shepherd. I'm not going to have any lack. You know, you know, you see how you nicely turned out today? I must compliment your wife. But if you have a wife, I need to compliment how you nicely turned out. But, 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 but all of you are nicely turned out, by the way. But, but what I'm saying, you will have plenty of clothes, and you will have shelter, and you will have a roof over your head. Am I talking to somebody? Because I've created enough, and I am your provider, and I'm responsible for your welfare. You don't have to worry. You will not starve. You will not die. You will not go without. You will not sleep under the tree because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And he says you must come out from among them and be his separate. And I will be your father and you'll be my sons and my daughters. You're not responsible for yourself. Hallelujah. Turn it over to Jesus and everything is going to be all right. I know that I can't really get into full flow today for time, but, but let's go quickly to talk about he's Lord of the church. Jesus says, I am going to what? Build my church and the gates of hell can't prevail. Fight it will, fight it must, but can't prevail because I am building my church. Now let me tell you quickly, the church doesn't belong to both. You hear me? Don't belong to both, don't belong to hill, don't belong to any human being, it belongs to Jesus. Oh come on. So when, Je when Jesus says I'm building my church, he is saying the souls are mine. Oh. The people belong to me. Hear me, hear me, Cathedral of Praise. 
The structure is yours. The structure belongs to all the members of Cathedral of Praise. And as long as there are people here, the structure belongs to you. Hear me? But the people belongs to God. Oh! The people belongs to God. The structure is yours. You pay your tithes and you pay your offerings so you own the structure. But you don't own the church. The church belongs to Jesus. Ah, somebody ought to help me preach today. And that's why, that's why, Pastor, I have confidence in the head of the church. Oh, I said I have confidence in the head of the church because the head of the church is not in Cleveland, Tennessee. The head of the church is not in Northampton. The head of the church is sitting at the right hand of his majesty on high. So come on. Don't play the fool. The church belongs to God. The people belong to God. The ecclesia, the call out one, they are God's people, whatever they look like. Ah. Hello. The church belongs to God. And that's why the, that's why the church must reflect the world. It must reflect the community in which the church exists. Oh, and that's why we want to see Asian people in the church. You are hearing me? We want more Africans in the church. Are you hearing me? We want more Caucasian in the church. Are you hearing me? Because Jesus died for all of humanity. He is the head of the church. Oh, come on, somebody! And we think, we think we can manipulate God's church, and we think we can do what we like with God's church. Oh, but I come to tell you today that he is the Lord of the church. He owns it. He pay an expensive price for it. Oh, it cost him his lifeblood. It cost him every drop of his blood to purchase this church. So when he predestinates you, Lord Jesus, if he predestinates you and he made you fortunate to be a part of his church, then you ought to sit down and behave yourself and humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and then he will exalt you in due time. Ah, somebody ought to help me preach today. He's Lord of the church. He owns it. Hallelujah. When he walk into in church, into his church, he wants to see worship. He wants to see holiness. He wants to see cleanness. Am I talking to somebody? He wants a church that's holy. He's Lord of our lives. He's Lord of our lives. There is no, not supposed to be any no-go area where God can't go. Am I talking to you, somebody? Sometimes we want to lock out God out of part of our lives. Or sometimes we want to mix God with other things. You didn't hear me. We want to mix God with other things. Must be pure. We are a clean church. We are a holiness church. We are a right living church. Hallelujah. We are a Bible believing church. So, 
So we mustn't turn the church into something that is not designed to be. It's not a social club. Am I talking to did you know that the, you did you know that the church did the church is the only organization where the participant, the membership is supposed to be unworthy. You didn't hear me. This is a place for sinners. You hear me? This is a place for sinners. This is a place where people come to get repaired. This is a place where people come to get help. This is a place where people come to get upliftment. This is a place where people come to get encouragement. Because they love God and they know that God is the Lord over their lives. So I don't mind people coming to church with problems. You're not hearing me. I want people to come to church with problems. I'd rather them come to church with problems than jump off a bridge. Are you hearing me? Than jump under a train. Are you hearing me, somebody? Like shoot cocaine up their heart. Let them come to the house of the Lord. For he is the Lord of their lives. And he will save them in due course. kind of church do we want? We want a church where everybody is somebody. Hallelujah! He is Lord of your life and Lord of my life and Lord of your life and Lord of your life and Lord of your life. Of your life. He is Lord over all of his church. I have to stop. But let me, t let me tell you, let me tell you, the church of Jesus Christ the church of Jesus Christ has full representation. Come on. Peter was a Jew. Help me, somebody. Help me. I said, Peter was a Jew. Are you hearing me? Cornelius was a Gentile. Are you hearing me? Paul was notorious. Are you hearing me, somebody? But when all is said and done, he don't care what your background was. He don't care what your past life is. If you are saved and you are sanctified and you are consecrated and you're delivered from your sin, you can be a part of the church of Jesus Christ. doesn't matter where you've been. No matter what you've done, if you truly repent of your sin, Jesus will receive you and be a father unto you and allow you to be his sons and his daughter. He's Lord. He's Lord. Sing with me, please. He's Lord. He's Lord. He's Lord. He is Lord. He's risen from the dead and he is Lord. He has risen from the dead and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. Every knee shall bow every tongue confess that Jesus Christ. today? He is Lord. Are you willing to bow under the Lordship of Christ today? He has risen from the dead. He wants to be Lord of your life. Lord. He wants to be Lord of your life. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that she Jesus that I speak of, he is goodness. 
He is kindness. He is gentleness. And he is love. He is holy and righteous. He is mighty and powerful. And he is good. His ways is right. His words are eternal. His rule is unchanging. His mind is on me. He is my redeemer. He is my savior. He is my God. He is my priest. He is my joy. He is my comfort. He is my law. And he rules my life. He rules my life. And he wants to rule your life. Is there somebody today who say, you know what? I've been astray. You know what? I've been running for a long time. I am ready now to surrender my life to Jesus. I know we got to go into our communion service. We're going there. But before I get to that, I want to just check. Is there somebody today who wants to make Jesus the Lord of their life? Time is short. Time is short. If that's you, you don't know Jesus as your Savior and as your Lord. Would you own him today? Would you own him today? Would you own Jesus today and make him your Lord? Would you say, all to Jesus I surrender. All to him I will freely give. I'll ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. I surrender. I surrender all. Is that you today? You need to surrender. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. Sing one more time. He's Lord. He's Lord. He's Lord. He is Lord. Is that you? Would you like to come and bow before your Maker? Would you like to give Jesus a chance in your life today? Thank you for your words. Pray that those words will indeed find a place in our hearts to dwell and bring about the desired change that you want for our lives. Bless each person today who listened to this word. Help us all to realize that you are Lord of your universe and of your church and of our lives. We pray now that you would just bless us together as we go into our communion service. May your name be glorified and be praised in all that we do and say. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 Please be seated. Please be seated. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give God praise. We give the Lord praise for today. Come on, we give him praise. We give him praise. He is worthy of the praise. He is deserving of all praise. Let us sing. Him, what can wash away my sin? 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 Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What?
From our second reading this morning, 1 Corinthians 11:23 through 26, it explains for us the qualification for participating in the Lord's Supper. It clearly says, this is the qualification, let a man examine himself and then let him or her eat of that bread and drink of that wine. And then the Apostle Paul says, if someone happened to eat of this bread and drink this wine unworthily, there is a consequence. They eat and drink unto themselves damnation or judgment. And we need to always remember that God, is, God has a dual nature. There's two sides to God. God is merciful, but God is also just. He has dual nature. So God is a just God, and he punishes us if we don't do the right things. Let me just say that we don't believe in excluding people from communion. So the criteria is if you are saved, if you've repented of your sin, then I want to invite every person that's here who've known Jesus as Savior to partake with us today in the Lord's Supper. If for any reason you are feeling unworthy, then there is a moment that I will be given for you and I to spend in silent contemplation before the Lord, and that is to prepare us to receive his body and his blood. So we're going to now go to that silent time of reflection, and after the silent time of reflection, Reverend Ricketts is going to pray God's blessing over the bread and the wine, and I will give you the instructions after the prayer. Just stand with me, please. And Bishop, I'd just like to borrow a couple of seconds of your time. I would like you to sing with me, if you know this course, about two times. It's going to have a lot to do with uh, taking the Lord's Supper. I'm going to say something as well that um, I want you to answer yes. It is the Lord's Supper time. Yes. One more time. It is the Lord's Supper time. If you only know the blessing that salvation brings, you will never stay away. Time. If you 
instituted the Lord's Supper. Jesus said to his followers, his disciples, concerning the Lord's Supper, as often time as you drink this cup, eat this bread and drink this cup, you show my death until I come. Lord, we are about to observe or to participate. Thank you. We are about to do so, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. I pray that you will cause that it is well with us to do so. Breathe upon every heart and every soul and every mind that shall participate. And breathe upon the bread and the wine. Yes. And cause that your people that is called by your name will observe and eat the bread and drink the wine according to what Jesus said. We show his death until he comes. I commit everything right now into your almighty hands as we worship you this way in this session. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Ricketts. Please be seated. The scripture tells us that the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it gave it to his disciples and tell the people that they should eat because this is his body that was broken for them. And after the same manner, he took the cup and after supper saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. As often as you drink this, drink it in remembrance of me. receive your emblems please hold it and wait for me to give you the command as to when we will eat we will eat the it blood together the Jesus
of your sins are in love and charity with your neighbors and resolve to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking henceforth in his holy ways draw near with faith and take this sacrament to your comfort and growth in grace now you will know that your wine and bread are together you take off the pin layer to get hold of the wafer and if you would do that and get that ready you might need to help your neighbor to undo it try to do it without touching their bread if you can are you there there just hold your bread up so I can see that you're ready the body of Christ broken for you the body of Christ keeps you in eternal life take this in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving let us eat shed for you. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and be he thankful. Let us drink.
to take a few moments in a prayer of thanksgiving and praise. Let's thank God for Jesus. Let's thank him for our Savior. Let's thank him for our life. Come on, let's reach out to the Lord in thanksgiving. You thank him in your own way. Whatever you need to say to him, say to him in your own way. Father, we praise you today. We bless you. We love you. We adore you. We worship you. We magnify you. We glorify your name. We celebrate your goodness. We thank you for your love, for your mercy, for your grace, for your peace. Thank you for pardon. Thank you for cleansing. Hallelujah. Thank you for your sufficient grace. Thank you for provision. Thank you for everything that you are doing in our lives. We bless you today, God. We pray in the name of Jesus that you would bless this congregation. Meet every need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus our Lord. Touch every sick body in the name of Jesus. Raise up your people this afternoon and help us to show forth the praises of you who called us from darkness into marvelous light. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Come on, somebody praise him. Come on, somebody praise him. Come on, somebody praise him. He is good. He is good. He is a good God. He is worthy of our praise. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Thank you for tuning in to this broadcast. If you would like us to pray with you, or perhaps you have a testimony you wish to share, please contact us by email or telephone. Our email address is admin at ntcgcathedralofpraise.org.uk or telephone 0208 888-9427 We look forward to hearing from you. Giving is a part of worship. Your gifts enable us to fulfill our mandate of reaching people, changing lives, and advancing the kingdom of God. Your donations, tithes, and offerings can be given via the account details on your screen. Alternatively, you may wish to contact us on 0208 888 9427. That's 0208 888 9427.